Hey there, welcome to this sketching tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I create this image that you're seeing here. This one's sped up, but the actual tutorial is fully real-time, fully narrated. It's just you hanging out with me, talking about drawing, and I'll share with you how I go about creating sketchbook style drawings and how we can attack and master the blank page. Let's get started. All right, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional artist for 20 years and a professional drawing teacher for 10 years. And I'm here to help you master the art of line and color illustration. This is gonna be a fully narrated, real-time, unedited tutorial. And it's just an opportunity for you to see how I would go about creating a sketchy sort of sketchbook style image like this. Now, if you are someone who likes sketching, but maybe you feel like you could sketch more or you're having challenges figuring out how to use your sketchbook, how to approach the blank page, how to figure out what to draw, check out my free regular sketching guide where I go over my basic advice for how to sketch regularly, draw regularly, and think about what the sketchbook means to us as artists. I think it's very easy to get assaulted by a huge ton of advice about how we should use our sketchbooks. And I think the most important thing is to make sure it's fun, make sure this process is fun. So that's what I talk about in that guide. Go check it out. Let's jump into this tutorial. And I've got a sort of a 4B pencil. Um, normally I sketch a bit lighter, but doing this um, for you means that those light pencils often don't actually show up very well. So just maybe sketching some characters, going to sort of see what happens, so I'm roughing in <clears throat> some rough, basically stick figure stuff. Characters in repose, i.e. chilling out, not doing much. Again, vague idea in my head, but nothing kind of solid. And again, I'm subscribing to the theory that I often preach, which is that when we're starting out, you know, just doing sort of warm up sketches and stuff, we should be focusing on drawing stuff that we're already comfortable with. Get in the zone first, especially when I'm doing, you know, this is a demo. I'm just gonna try and keep it kind of simple and Simple and basic. <clears throat> and again, this is a tricky one because uh, I'd like to kind of keep talking and talk through the, everything I'm doing, but there'll probably be a couple of moments where I'm just going silent and trying to, trying to sort of zone out and focus a little bit. So again, this is allowing me to be <clears throat> a little bit sort of looser, more gestural to begin with, and, and, and that way, again, I can sort of come in later and put in put in detail. And I'm planning to do, again, like a, a bit of a rough sort of version like this, and then uh, probably use a kneadable eraser, take it back a little bit and, and have another go. Again, so horizon line is a little bit sort of lower. We've got like a character here. And it's going to be sort of a character here. <clears throat> 
I think it's important with these to just make sure we're sitting down regularly to sketch. I think again, half the time it's it's very so it can be very intimidating, right? Um, you know, I often try to sit down and you know, it's like if it doesn't go well, it's kind of bad. And you know, I'm, I I think one of the things I often get challenged with um, recently is just sort of that I I often actually like doing larger things, you know, like sort of big scenes and stuff in color. Um, and so often when I'm doing this type of work, uh, it just doesn't feel as rewarding to me because it's kind of just in the sketchbook. And I think a big part of that is is me having to sort of get better at managing the, the, the time with the sketch and just kind of saying like, let's just loosen up. Um, because when I'm doing like a bigger sort of scene, I'm, I'm really focusing a lot and I'm trying to, to make sure I sort of create something in a particular amount of time and it, it's often like uh, I, I take it seriously right because I'm practicing I'm practicing the act of you know trying to put something together like that um, whereas with this I remember again you know most of the time sketching is just about playing around and uh, you know I often want to try and do a little bit more with the with those, with these sketches, then maybe I should. So kind of like a bit of a vignette sketch. <clears throat> Just playing around with the pose. Again, it's going to get a little bit sort of sketchy, but I, I know what I'm doing. Hopefully. And again, this is just copy paper, so it's not gonna it's not gonna support much uh, much beating up. <clears throat> So uh, let's see, I feel like we need to take this out a little bit. Could we form a few more rock elements or something. Again, it's basically just gonna be some sort of characters sitting hanging out on some rocks which again is often a go-to simple easy background <clears throat> uh, all right I'm gonna try and have one more go at seeing how whether we can get some of this pose working here before I go to the next stage So just massing in these uh, these forms, just trying to again sort of feel a little bit of sort of gesture, um, try and sort of loosen up a bit before I go into sort of structural mode. Right. Can we 
make. I think we need to make this guy's arm a bit chunkier. And here, again, leg for here. Something like that. <clears throat> um, now again, I'm gonna take it back a little bit with this needable eraser, but I'm gonna try and be gentle with it because A, it's okay if it's a little bit sketchy. It's okay if we got some of these sketchy marks. It's it's sketchbook stuff. And B, I feel like um, because that pencil is so light it's really easy to kind of just completely wipe it away. So I'm not sure exactly which <clears throat> pencil I'm going to use for this because normally I will use a mechanical pencil or, or, or something, but I might use like a, again, something darker. face here. See if we can construct that out a little bit. Got center line. Let's find that point of the jaw. All right, we sort of got nose. So again, I'll probably be doing <clears throat> a bit of a again structural pass, seeing if I can sort some of some of this stuff out. And then we might go in there, erase out a little bit more of it, and then do a final pass. So we're still going to try and be. This is this would be less loose. This next pass, um, some sort of structure. But again, I'm still going to try and not tighten up, right? Consciously try and not get too too stiff or anything. And again, conscious that um, yeah, it's very easy using this type of technique and process to um, yeah get get the get the anatomy way off. If we just kind of like start doodling around, it's super easy to then completely miss something. So just trying to really think about where that sort of torso is. All right, where those? Okay, we've got sort of this arm here. I feel like I need to work on that sort of tangent. So again, we've sort of got torso, neck going there, center line. belt of the waist there, All right, got some hips, so I think this leg again, it needs to be a little bit, a little bit chunkier, <clears throat> let's get, get that ball to the shoulder, and now I'm just going to make sure I draw this arm so it doesn't create super awkward tangents, so that's really the only goal, like where do we place this? Well, let's optimize for not uh, for clarity, right? To make sure it sort of intersects everything in, in a nice way, but still giving it some sort of gesture that way. Now, again, I think the idea is from this other shoulder that's there, we're still going to have an arm kind of here, and that one is going to be. 
sort of holding some sort of daggery thing. Um, <clears throat> so again, I've got a cape coming around here. Maybe some sort of, again, just going to all the fancy tropes that I, I kind of like. Right, some sort of stuff that creates nice shapes on on the back. Now, one of the tricky things about again drawing something like this is that you, you, if you're used to kind of going in there and, and holding the pencil like this, if if we're doing something bigger you kind of got to hold the pen a little bit further back or at least have a bit of paper or something to make sure we don't smudge it um, to, to smithereens, right? And just sort of ruin everything. All right, so again, I'm gonna just we're sort of gonna have this cape maybe fall down and this leg here. Right, it's gonna maybe gonna sort of come behind there. Have some fingers sort of holding that rock. And then get maybe some things on this arm to sort of show the the structure there. And Probably what I'll do is I'll wait till the next pass to kind of put in the face because um, again if I do it now that's just going to end in tears because I'll have to redo it I think because I'm going to need to probably erase some of that and, and do a bit of a, another pass. So again here let's try and add some nice cracked cool fantasy rocks. Again, the way I often like to describe um, this, if we're sort of sketching, is is normally there's like one or two things that we're sort of trying to work on that I'm trying to work on, um, and you know the, the the rest of it can can frequently just end up being sort of filler, right? So you know some of these things are kind of interesting, some of these things I'm sort of trying to design and focus on, other things just aren't as, in, as important, right? Um, you know, in terms of originality or uniqueness. So that's why, you know, I often do very similar things. Um, you know, just the same kind of rocks and stuff. It's it's like a sort of set, dreading, set dressing, right? We've got the rock set, then, then we put other things in it. Um, now I'm just gonna move this down so I've got better sort of access to this guy. And this is where I will have a little bit of paper and that way I can just sort of try and focus on this a little bit more. So I'm just gonna try and even though I think you sort of have some, uh, some sort of armor on here, still gonna put, um, still gonna try and figure out where some of that sort of anatomy would be. big sort of monsterish orc kind of character so again I've got that kind of that head structure I, I feel like again part of me is like uh, you probably don't need that for this right sometimes if you if we kind of see the shape in there right if the shape is kind of working and I, and I feel like you know, I can just sort of go with it again I will, I will sort of imagine some of that sort of structure Again, just add a bit to the back of the head and it's things like, uh, you know, just thinking about again where that sort of jaw might be, right, where that, where that cheekbone should be. So adding in those proportional markers, they don't always have to come from, you know, starting with the, starting with a, a sphere, um, you know, and sort of doing this sort of linear thing. 
the, the key with a lot of drawing is that it is it is a non-linear equation. If you know where one thing is, you can often gauge where sort of other things are. That's to me one of the one of the super important things to understand about perspective and all of those kind of systems. It's like I don't have to start with you know a particular thing and then add a, another sort of thing. Um, it, it's understanding the proportional relationship between them. Once we sort of do that, then uh, everything becomes a lot easier. At least that's my that's my thought. So check that that's yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Head feels a bit big, but again, that's not a problem. I think what I sort of have to do is just make this, right, make this sort of deltoid and all these muscles like way chunkier as well. Give him that sort of bodybuilder sort of look, right? He's got the, the 40 inch arms, the fantasy, fantasy arms and things. Uh, and again, I was gonna have some sort of armor. Might just simplify that. Again, just try to find some of this proportion. Make sure we're being a little bit structural. Maybe some sort of crossing strap there. Obviously, we've got a um, sort of cape thing. So, got that. Now, again, before I put too much of this in, just need to just double check some of that sort of proportion because I have a feeling, again, this guy could end up looking a bit funny. So all, all that checking proportion means is just step back, take a minute, take a breather. Let's make sure we're, we're getting everything right. Again, this arm is now anemically small. Yeah, I feel like maybe that neck needs to connect a little bit. So again, just sort of adjusting lines, playing around. Um, and again, similar to what I sort of did with this character, I feel like this leg now needs to be like sort of way, way chunkier. I'm not convinced about this arm, this hand at all. This hand again, let's just mass in a ball. It's got some sort of sword here. Let's just draw that through again. Line up sort of the hilt with the angle of his arm. I think we're going to have to drop that down. And then draw it down there. I'm drawing it down there. I'll get it back up in a sec. Sort of centered, so that's kind of what we've got, <clears throat> something like that. Just trying to think. 
think about what type of armor we're going to have here. Again, don't know how much we'll refine of this. This might just be like a bit of sort of sketchy stuff in here that, again, you know, it's, it's, I might sort of define it a little bit in my head and sort of see how, see how much of it gets onto the page. So it's got sort of a cape coming down there. So paying attention to this sort of set of overlaps here. Now again, this does not feel super structural to me. I need to make this a bit more structural. Just making sure stuff lines up with itself, but yeah, I mean the problem here is I'm like, oh this hand is sort of this hand is going to be like sort of way forward. So we'll probably we have to redraw that. Let's draw the hand in a bit better. Again, super, super, super rough right now. It doesn't have to be like a, you know, hyper finished hand or anything, but I think it's going to sort of pop out a little bit more. again that that hilt is kind of just going to be right a little bit forward like that again uh, I feel like could easily struggle with that with that hand I'm just going to leave it here Nice and illogical, sharp, sort of bad guy sword. Don't. Get sort of rocks here. Rocks there. So yeah, again, I, I didn't really, I don't really know what's sort of happening with his anatomy behind here. It's probably something like that, and again, Got that leg. Don't, don't. Let's put some sort of shin guard thing there. Think a little bit about the folds. Don't, don't. Bam. That'll probably do. So this rock is in front of her. So again, some sort of rocks. Playing with the drapery. for the moment. This rock is behind there. I've got some rocks here. Rocks here. Stuff here. So again, just roughing these in and off sometimes, you know, depending on how focal this sort of stuff is, right? You know, I might just leave it super rough. Sometimes we might do some more with it. 
we'll see. Again, just a sketch. I need to keep it fairly sort of quick. But again, it's sort of coming together. I feel like this guy's head is too big. But again, I feel like it's because the jaw is sort of too big. And I sort of gave him this helmet. So part of me is kind of like, maybe I should just... Maybe I, maybe it's more the, the helmet that's the problem. Yeah, if I kind of just... It's often just because his jaw looks so big. We'll see. I think if we make this arm big enough, it'll kind of make sense. You can see how much bigger this arm has gotten. Just sort of made it absurdly huge. <laughs> Just make sure that pictorial has some chance of... Right, sort of going in there. Um, around there. Alright. Hands. Finger. Finger. Turn. What else have we got? To define that. This thing here. Let's try. <clears throat> so it's got a kneaded eraser and basically just gonna, you know, sort of dab this back a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna sort of focus on dabbing back areas that have a lot of sort of underlying structure where I've done some sort of draw through, right? So, and areas that I feel like need a redraw. Right, so there's some areas, right, like this sword is sort of a bit crap, but it's not the worst. You know, I could probably leave that. No one's really going to care. Um, might be good again. I'm just sort of going to go through and dab here. Right, might be good to have another go at some of that. You can see that this, right, has gotten a bit messy. Right, so I'm not quite sure what's actually happening there, so I'm going to dab that back. Probably sound. I think this probably sounds super loud on the recording. Again, take that back. Take this back. The hand. Um, so again, similar sort of thing here can really sort of take that face back because uh, you know I don't want like that center line to be in there so we can sort of get rid of that center line and you can see there's a lot of sort of draw through and stuff sort of happening here again with the arm again like a million legs drawn through there so, you know, there's some bits of it that are, that are probably kind of okay. Again, that hand can probably get redone. This hand can probably get redone. So that's sort of how I'm going through, right? I'm sort of looking at stuff where I'm sort of thinking in my head, like, that would be good to have another go at that. Now, there's a couple of different ways I could go. I do have a 2B.5 mechanical pencil here. And part of me was kind of like, oh, I wonder how, I wonder how that will kind of go. Shave it down a bit. Um, yeah, I feel like the problem there is I'm sort of having to press pretty hard. So I'm not entirely sure, but let, let's have a go. Again, I'm going to totally trash that paper. So let's put some stuff there. 
And yeah, so we're probably about you know half an hour in, and we've sort of got most of this roughed in. Apologies, my head's going to sort of be popping in a little bit into frame. Um, hard to stop that because I've got to get over the page and really sort of see what what is kind of happening. The other thing I can do is kind of bring it down, but I want to sort of keep it somewhat centered. All right, so we've got a finger, draw some sort of average fingers, hands in there. So yeah, not convinced that this um, this mechanical pencil is really going to do what I want. I feel like it's um it's not it's not like really grabbing the page. Hard to explain. Just, just doing what I want. Yeah, that's better. I think all this is is just a, a slightly better quality of lead. I found this old box of uh, this old thing of 0.5 2B leads, and I was like, oh, that might be better. But I don't think it's actually darker than the um, B leads that I was using. Not not happy with that face, but we'll see. I can keep I can keep having another go at it. Um, let's try. Try that. The, the sort of black wing again. I think that's going to be better for this. Just having to press so hard with that other one. So yeah, trying to make it a little bit more suggestive. I just don't think there's like enough sort of crazy detail or anything like that. Uh, there's not enough sort of detail in the paper, right? To kind of go in there and with the sort of level of sort of sketching that I'm gonna do. So try just make the eyes like a little bit more suggestive. Now it's easy to kind of tighten up, right? That's a little bit of sort of what I'm doing. Changing pencil is like a stupid idea. Um, but uh, yeah, super easy when we sort of say, hey, okay, now I'm gonna sort of make it shinier and tighter. 
it's super easy to just really sort of tighten up way too much um, and, and, and then end up, yeah, sort of being a bit cautious. We don't, we don't want to be too cautious. So I've got, again, some sort of typical barbarian motifs here. This other arm over here. looking illogical knives and things and just see if we can suggest in a better mount there and a bit more hair strands and things so again here we've got this sort of cape which I'm kind of saying is maybe sort of draping over this rock and in here I'm just gonna get some sort of shadowing okay, that's where that leg is kind of going and there it's gonna be shadowed shadowed oh. Wrong line here, we've got this. This rock here. This rock here. This rock here. Deal with this later. I think we need to come up here and do this guy. Uh, and I'll, I'll start this way just because that means probably, um, yeah, that way I can sort of really cover that up and make sure I don't sort of ruin that. So, again, I think I'll bring that down again. Normally, when I'm doing this, you know, I would move the page around a lot more, but because I'm sort of recording. Uh, you know, I'm trying to sort of keep it in frame. Um, it's, it is one of the biggest challenges with the sort of recording your sort of process is it's kind of, it's like never exactly the same. Um, so we've got these little sort of squinty eyes here. don't know what we were going to do with this helmet or what this helmet is good for because if it doesn't cover up your face it's not very sort of useful and again these things are sort of based on those kind of roman that that sort of armor helmet aesthetic but those normally wrap under the chin but who cares we're just trying to draw some cool stuff if you if, if you know anything about armor you're probably um 
turned off a long time ago. That's a, that is a terrible line to make for an earringy thing. So I've got the jaw here. Cross that. Again, putting in like a little bit of sort of a, a shadow there, right? Again, push that sort of cheekbone. And the idea is he sort of has that like sort of top knot or something, which is going to come down. So here, again, I, I can like sort of carve out those sketchy lines, which you see just that flick, like, that's not good either. Yeah, just carve out a few of those super sketchy lines that we kind of don't need there. So again, still trying to stay kind of loose with this side of it. A bit of texture and let's sharpen this pencil a bit. I'm so used to using mechanical pencils that yeah it's very easy to uh, yeah just sort of forget to, to sharpen pencils. This whole area is just going a bit messy. Just focus on getting that clean line there. And then it can be a little bit sort of rougher with the rest of it. This, whatever this thing is, sort of from the backpack. Got this kind of shoulder paddy thing. The arm here. And again, I'm just going to prioritize the. I feel like we don't need that. Because <sighs> again, this this is not. Right, it's not not that important. A part of what we're doing that sort of firearm so I just kind of keep it on the down low it might not come back to haunt me quite as much from an anatomical point of view having some sort of armor probably made of leather or something there okay we've got this and then I'm not resolving that too well right I'm like eh that would probably do okay other shoulder paddy thing Let's put some weird little abstract marks on it I set these shadows a little bit better. Let's get this um uh, deltoid somewhere here. How it's connecting here, not quite sure. Again. 
again, not the strongest part of the drawing. Sort of that. Um, forearm here. And here we've got some knuckles. Finger one. Finger two. Finger three. I sort of typically this. I didn't divide it up, so I sort of typical running out of room, running out of finger room. That's right. Some arm wrapping. Again, Fantasy Troops 101. Hopefully helps to sort of describe that form a little bit more. Again, you can probably do a similar thing here. Okay, we sort of had this sword there. With the sword, and then we sort of got so we've got this finger. I'm gonna have a finger going down here. You can kind of do it like that. And let's sharpen that pencil. Just sort of let's get rid of some of these little bits and pieces there. Yeah, this is where you need one of those brushes. Don't have one handy. Just smudged it again. We'll survive. So again, that is way too sharp. Just dent it a bit. move on to something else until this pencil is sort of properly um, worn down so I don't want to sort of play around with the hand because I know again I'm, I'm always aware of what I call hand purgatory getting thrown in the deep end with a hand that's not working so again just move around move around the page try out some different stuff um, yeah. So again, not a great hand. Um, in fact, it's that's pretty bad. Let's um. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of I'll get rid of it, and then we'll come back to it and see if we can have another go. Um, let's get rid of some of this sketchiness, and let's do with something a little bit easier, like rocks. So again, you know, a good thing about having um you know, like a, a little bit of a scene or a vignette, right, where we've got like a few little bits and pieces is that, yeah, you know, it gives you some stuff to do when, you're, um, when your hands aren't working.
don't, 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 don't. Let's define this plane versus this plane. Add a little bit of sort of uh, hatching. Same thing here. So it'll just be a little bit sort of sketchier. And again, probably have like some grass going sort of behind. And um, might be good to have again like a few bits of grass kind of going in front of there as well that really help with them. Um, setting the, the character in the environment. Um, right, so this is, let's make sure, yeah, we sort of, I mean, we can lose this edge between, you know, like this character and the, right, the character there behind like we don't need like a hard edge but I, I do think I want to sort of make sure that again we get like a nice decent edge that's that's turning out to be a bit of an ugly tangent maybe we should just move some of those silhouette pops somewhere else um, again I've got the hair Cape thing. Right, and here's this leg sort of shin guard thing. Don't, don't, don't. See, so yeah, approaching the, the sort of hour mark with this, if my timer is any indication probably um, again just need to really fix that hand and then this one and then we're kind of like done with most of the stuff so to go to draw her hand as, as well but again I'm probably just gonna do something super super lame like that Again, I want to sort of make it clear that like this is her hair, so right, so she's sort of got hair here, hair here, and that that is kind of different from right what's going on behind, but that sort of is tricky. It might actually, it might actually be better to kind of invert that, right? Like not have as much, not have that being the dark bit, but maybe having again the bit sort of behind it being dark re-emphasize that line going there frame the face a little bit more Yeah, that's probably a bit much. It's flattening it out. Let's just make that a little bit sort of looser. All right, so yeah, let's have another go at this hand. So I've got wrist. And sort of got it wrapping around here.
I think, again, like this bump here in this sort of arm is probably a bit complete nonsense, fabricated. Really, again, it's like either the arm needs to go up or the... This thing kind of needs to go down. So or, or the main thing here, so I'm just going to make it as if this sort of thing is a bit curved because I feel like there's like, again, proportional problems at stake. So maybe this thing curves down, which doesn't make much sense, but... Um, so yeah, all, all, that, all that is sort of happening there is uh, I just made the error of not really checking the proportion of like where this hand should be. And once we sort of make that mistake, then it's tricky to kind of get this sort of through line there properly. This kind of hand sticking out here and then the other problem is like you know the the, the more we kind of focus on it the, the more we sort of redraw it the worse it sort of gets um, so that can be sort of the challenge where I sort of think maybe that arm is sort of going down because again he doesn't need to be sort of gripping onto it in any sort of crazy way just gonna sort of see whether this give me a bit more of that sort of feeling that I'm after. But I think again, you can see the problem is that the sword just kind of needs to go down. All the, all the sort of the, the, uh, the, the hand needs to go up. So again, maybe something like that will make it not look terrible. That's all I'm after, is just it not to look sort of terrible. Now the problem is again, now we've got this sort of overworked thing here. So I'm just gonna try and again, take it back, have another go, try and be a little bit sort of looser. And what I'll do is try and hard erase some of these sort of sketch lines that are, right? sort of floating about. Again, what we need is our nice little brush that'll get rid of that stuff. So one of the things I could do to make that hilt feel a little bit fancier is make this make this a little bit fancy and that makes it feel like it's a bit better that it's kind of going going this way all right Got that don't
go again. Not not great. Not good. Not nothing. But uh, I think it'll do the job. So again, now yeah, it's just a matter of uh, you know going through and, and looking at some of these other kind of areas, right? And just thinking about, again, that sort of zoom out look, right? So just shake off all of the bits of lead everywhere. So yeah, just uh, go through and see if we can clean up and refine a few of these little bits and pieces. Um, yeah, but it's pretty much done. So yeah, key is just um, just sit down and do it. Again, I, I feel like that, that one hour sort of time frame for me is manageable if I sort of do it every day. Um, you know, not every day I sort of have the opportunity, but um, so much of developing your sketching ritual and, and making sure that you sort of do it is understanding what you can sort of get done in a particular amount of time uh, how much detail you're likely to be able to get into it. You know, like it might be that, you know, I, I just would have no opportunity to fiddle around and, you know, fix hands or, or, or do anything like that, you know, if, if I was doing stuff and it was a slightly sort of uh, quicker time frame. So, you know, that sort of does give me the opportunity to, you know, maybe, maybe play around with this. And, um, you know, if, if I sort of only had half an hour, I think it might, it would have to be just sort of one character, right? We wouldn't be able to do any of this sort of multiple character stuff, but uh, yeah, you know, it's all the same. You just have to figure out what you can do in that amount of time. And again, that is specific to you. It, it doesn't, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with, you know, um, you know, not being able to do, you know, crazy amounts of drawing in a particular amount of time. It, it's like, this is what's sort of fun for me, right? Um, because this is what I've sort of spent um, age is doing is practicing these things and practicing trying to put little scenes together and um, you know see how quickly I can do it and you know so this for me is sort of a like a little bit of a challenge but not heaps of a challenge but th the most important thing is for you to figure out what is a challenge for you what's the right amount of challenge each time you go and sit down and sort of create stuff it's uh, managing challenge is one of the most important things when it comes to, um, you know, improving as an artist and, and making sure you, you actually sort of enjoy it. So, yeah, um, it, and it can take a while, right? You might have to practice to, to figure out exactly how much you can get done in that time. Um, and, and a lot of it is, you know, watching that timer and sort of being like, oh, well, if it's this time, then I really need to have these things done. And, uh, you know, I need to move on. And, uh, you know, it can be like a very, you know, it can be sort of feel like, oh, there's maybe undue pressure. But once you keep building that muscle and sort of get a feel for what you can create and, you know, maybe in a particular amount of time and then you keep pushing it and keep pushing it again, um, you, you get sort of a level of confidence about what you can and can't do. And so that means that, you know, you know that even though it's going to be a little bit of a pressure situation, that, you know, at the end of it, you have something, you know, you have something that, uh, you know, is of a certain level of quality. Now, again, that may just be, you know, drawing some faces or something like that. You, you may spend a couple of hours and just get one face um, sort of done, you know, that's totally, that's totally fine. Whatever it is for you that, that you enjoy, um, if you really nail that amount of time and get it all scheduled out, that means that um, you know, you, you can be confident that sitting down and, and spending that time is, is kind of worth it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just add a few more little bits and pieces. All right, try and pop out those, those overlapping lines a little bit. Yeah, so anyway, um, let me know in the comments how your sort of sketching is going, whether you have sort of challenges sticking to a sketching ritual and, you know, whether this is something you're interested in, in developing. Um, 
as I said, I have a sort of, you know, my thoughts on sketchbook manifesto uh, video that uh, you can sort of uh, sign up to get in the description. And that basically just goes over some of the stuff I've been talking about here today, right? Just my thoughts on what sketchbooking sort of should be, how you should sort of think about it, things you can do to, to improve and uh, get that sort of ritual happening. I think it's, it's super important. And again, you know, the real key of that is just that you, you have to figure out what works for you. Um, you know, I, I just sort of do this sort of stuff when I'm working on sketchbooks. I don't, I don't spend time doing life drawing. I don't spend time doing that. You can see again, my hands, uh, you know, often end up in the, in the bin, um, because of that. But, uh, you know, this is what I, this is what I like. I like sort of doing these kind of things and drawing little fantasy things and imagining and, uh, you know, it's a matter of you figuring out what works for you. You know, what do you, what do you enjoy? Um, how long does it take? And just getting in the habit of sitting down and doing it day after day after day. That's all I got. We're done. Catch you around. Happy drawing.